Well, then, uh, yeah, I, 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 will, I will give you, yeah, uh, some space to say what you want to say, hon. Okay. Um, so, I posted on um, Instagram and um, Facebook. I, I put up a video. This is a book called, it's published in 1996. It was called The Drag Queens of New York. Um, many of these people fought up and down the sidewalk to display their authentic realness. Um, so before I start, let me just say, um, I know I've always had an unusual libido, <laughs> but Mona died um, Tuesday and I've kind of been caught between being sensual in her honor and then not feeling so. Um, I seem to fluctuate back and forth between one or the other. So uh, let me say this first. I, I want to read from a page in the book, um, but first I'd like to say this. Um, as most of you know, or some of you do, I should say, um, my first experience in the trans community was when we had after hours transvestite clubs, or and then that sort of progressed to drag queen. Um, like 1974. Um, my first job in the industry was in the 220 Club, which is right across from the Film Forum at 220 West Houston. Um, you know, it was a mafia club. Um, you know what? If you got hurt on the job, no problem getting workers come because you've got it right there from there. Um, anyway, this is where I really met many legends, um, which I also answered on Instagram when somebody posted a picture of the 220 Club. I don't want to dwell on it too long because that was really before the time of the whole like East Village 90s, Wigstock, Star Search, Crow's Nest scene. Um, but I just wanted to preface it by saying um, I can remember almost, almost every name of everyone who ever partied or worked at the 220. I worked with um, the legendary Stormy De La Vere, um, whose picture graces the corner of Worcester and Grand by the LGBT Museum. Um, I even played uh, on the softball team. I played rather poorly at first base. They finally converted me to a, a relief pitcher, <laughs> which I was better at. So I got tons to say about that, but not now. Please, if I go on too long, don't hesitate to tell me. Um, anyway, I'm going to fast forward to basically a period of, like I would say, 1991 to 96 was kind of the heyday of the pyramid, um, where many people progressed so I'm just going to be a cross-dresser. Then they became like full-time drag queens. And then they were, I'm never going to have any kind of augmentation. Then they did. Um, why? Because transitioning really is perpetual. Um, so uh, I could go through a lot of the names of some of the greatest names, Head of Lettuce. Uh, my favorite was probably 
misunderstood. Um, Mistress Formica, uh, Mona, Girlina, Baby Jane Doe, um, and many others who have since passed from the plague. Um, but the one legend who passed away from the coronavirus Tuesday was Mona Foote. Um, I'm still figuring out, what is it, copy and paste? I know, but I'm, I, I gotta be honest, I can't make believe I know what I do. So, um, this was written in 1996, and um, how much time do I have left, Robin? Because this might take me five minutes to read this. So I don't know if I should read the take, whole take, thing. Take your five minutes, hon. Okay. Um, okay, let me also say that this is written in present tense. And if you all don't mind, I'd like to, I'd like to continue with in present tense. <laughs> I'm sorry. No apologies needed, dear. You take your time. So, okay. All right, girl, regroup. Oh. Ah, uh, where's my Kotex pad? No. Uh, so, to say that Mona Foot lip syncs is to say that the plaza is a hotel. That Midas was wealthy. She doesn't simply not. She rides a song like a cowgirl rides a bronco. She penetrates it, bends it to her will, and in the end, interprets it with such energy and authority that one feels the song has been given legs at least as much as she's been given a voice. Great vocal performances are simply better when Mona mouths them. Imagine having heard Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker but never having seen it danced. And then one day, she comes to town. Such is the inimitable power of Mona's fancy footwork. She clearly understands the extremes to which the singers she interprets will go. She has mastered, uh, excuse me, Sorry. Um, she has quivering lore of a vibrato gone out of control. The hilarious, gaudy graspiness of a dying disco diva's swan song and the high kicking, neck waving. Three snaps and you're out intensity of a strong woman who knows what's hers is hers and what's yours is probably hers too. I love that line. <laughs> the fans, of course, adore her for it and flock to her appearances where she manages the neat trick of making onlookers feel silly and hip at the same time. A lot of Mona is my mother. She was so hot when I was young. She had sunglasses for every day of the week, and she wore wigs. To see Mona in full regalia, I might add, every time I saw Mona, she had on a different pair of sunglasses. And she wore them like nobody else could. To know that what she is is not the whole story. As a child, says Mona, I was always into superheroes and secret agents and futuristic stuff. Excluding a style of vocabulary that includes not only Twigger Airy Mod, but also Barbarella Torpedo Tits and Space Age Metallica.
Two more faithful facets also set Mona apart. She is black and she is your. Mona Foote's working birthing baby queens is second only to Lady Bunnies, Linda Simpson, and that of her own mentor. She never set out to become such, she'll be first to tell you. Uh, but she struck pay date both for herself and the community as hostess of the hugely successful Mona Foote Star Search at the Crowbar, a diminutive, dimly lit, which along with its sister bar, Barracuda, has taken up some of the slack left by the loss of the pyramid. Star Search has been one of the best times of my career. And the best thing about that show, Mona says with her mouth full, is that the winner got paid. Um, so, there's just uh, five, like six, uh, four questions that Mona answers. Um, and uh, I wanted to just say three of them. The first one is, Mona, how would you advise civilians about how to start up a conversation with you? Well, tell me how beautiful I am. On herself, Mona is an independent, strong black woman strong and powerful. She wants things her way and she gets it. On work, occasionally she gets a call on the phone and her presence is needed and she goes. She goes where she's needed, especially when she needs the money. So I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, there is other lit and stuff that people could look up. But let me just say that Mona was as courageous a fighter for all those who fall under the umbrella of gender illusion, which is a quote from Leslie Feinberg, I might add. And so with that, can I just say Mona Foot, rest in power, rest in peace, girl. There she is. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Renee. Rest <laughs> in power, Mona. <laughs> Thank you. All my love, dear. Thank you for sharing that with us. I don't know if you're seeing the chat, but we're all sending our love to you, right? Thank okay. You. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for telling us about her. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm crying, breaking down. Can't help. Nothing, no apologize, hon. No apologies needed, hon. Okay? Okay. All right. All the love, right? I love you all so much. Love, love you too, Queen. You have no idea what you all mean to me. There's no words, there's no way to measure how I have been reborn with your presence. And it could never be replaced. I have COPD. I'm supposedly in a high risk category. Um, so far, I'm okay. Um, it's funny. Uh, this virus kind of plays with your head. My chest had been sore when I woke up in the morning this week. And I, you know, you start worrying, oh, what is this? I feel this and that. And then I said to Ayala, they said, you know, I just remembered that two cycles ago, 
I upped my estrogen. And <laughs> Yellen said, oh, girl, no wonder your titties are sore. <laughs> they never stop growing. So They never stop growing. Uh, I know. Uh, I just wish I could lick them, but then I wish I could suck my own genitalia, too. But. Hey, at least I try. A dream for all of us, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, hon. Just stay safe. Please let us know if there's anything you need that we can send your way, right? That, yeah. that keeps you through this, okay? Yeah, okay, gonna... I promise. All right? I will. I'm just, I'm okay for now. Um, I've been isolated for 15 days. Yeah. Which is like years to this social animal, bitch. I, I, I feel um, that hard, hon. Yep. It is good to see your face, though. Yo, you all are a dream to me. And I've scrolled every single one of you, and I treasure uh, every one of you at this moment. And I thank you all for sharing uh, so much with me. I'm going to feel guilty now if I keep talking, so. Okay. All right. You, you, relax, you rest. Thank you again, hon. Um, we're going we're gonna to go over to Cole.